Can I use my normal prerogative and ask the first question? If I've understood you correctly, it's actually all the work that's been done on quantum computing won't actually solve these problems. So quantum computing uh, might make the problem less relevant because right. there's, there's, you see, once, you, once we have a quantum computer, then suddenly there's a new class of problems, right? They're BQP, the class of problems we can solve using a quantum quantum computer. And BQP, we don't know, we can't prove anything, right? We're really not very good at proving that a certain class of problems is different to a certain other class. That's exactly the thing we can't do. Uh, so BQP will sit somewhere in that picture, right? So all the, all, the poly, all the things we can solve quickly using a normal computer, we can definitely solve quickly using a quantum computer. But there are things which we can solve quickly. Factoring is a great example. We can solve factoring quickly using a quantum computer. And so if quantum computers actually do become real, then we might have to start re-evaluating the importance of... But you see, that was what happened with bisecting angles. Right? It was important at one point. Right? If quantum computers become real, and then in 30 years' time, none of us have computers anymore, we all have quantum computers, then the question has changed, you see. Uh, so the answer is quantum computers won't resolve the problem, but they might make the problem less important. And, but... but here, let, me, let me just say one thing about quantum computers. Now, you do see companies that are claiming to have built quantum computers. But there's a very famous, uh, famous 617-digit number that was, that was invented by some guys. And not invented, I mean, they, they took three, two 300-digit prime numbers and times them together and made a 600-digit number. And they put it on the internet. And then they destroyed the computer that they'd used to compute the 300-digit numbers. And they said, there you go, factor that. And that's it. <laughs> And that 600-digit number, and they offered a big reward for it lapsed. And uh, no one is... If somebody, if somebody had a real quantum computer, they could factor that 600-digit number, OK? But until that 600-digit number is factored, I do not believe that quantum computers exist, whatever you read in the popular press. OK. A play problem, in other words. Right. Any right. questions, comments? Hello. Oh, who chooses? I choose. OK. When I see a hand going up... I Oh, there. please, yes, sorry, yes, yeah. Uh, can you wait for the microphone to come? Hello, I'm Kevin. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Uh, firstly, thanks for the talk. It's yeah, no really good. Um, I can see that proving P is not equal to MP is one task, because all you need to do is take one MP problem and prove that... Prove it's not MP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then you've solved that problem because yeah, they're yeah. definitely not equal. But proving the other way around is going to be tricky, right? Because you have to take every problem that's in NP and make it P. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have to visualise, Rom? There are certain problems... Oh, curses, my phone's off. Uh, so that was the case in 1971. But a few years later, there was this breakthrough. Some people realised... Some people isolated some of the hardest problems in MP. Okay. Uh, the hardest problems in MP are things called MP hard problems. Uh, or MP. <laughs> <laughs> and what they showed was if you could solve just one MP hard problem quickly, then you could solve all MP problems quickly. So it's, there is actually, the, the MP problems are kind of in a list, and they've worked out what's at the end. At the end, there's a whole bunch of problems, which are the hardest MP problems. So all you have to do is solve one of those MP problems. And my, I've got, so like Pokemon is a great example. I was going to show you something. I, mean, I was going to show you an app on my phone that happens to be MP hard. But Pokemon is a, but Super Mario Brothers as well. If you could write a computer program that just looked at Super Mario Brothers level and worked out quickly whether or not you could play it, then you prove P equals MP. Okay, so you can play Super Mario when your mum asks you what you're doing. You can say you're working on one of the most important problems in mathematics. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, you're at, yeah, well spotted, and you're absolutely right. So read about MP hard problems. Those are the hardest. Just solve one of them, and you solve them all. So it's very, very clear what the job is. We've got to solve. We've got to either prove you can't solve one problem quickly, or we prove a certain, you know, a certain list of. There's thousands of them now. You just got to solve one of these thousands of problems, and you've done it. So that's what you should work on, if you think it's true. Please, can you wait for a microphone? Um, John, just there.
Do you, do you think that uh, chaotic systems are uh, in PHAR problems that we just cannot uh, calculate? Can you ask the question again? So if you, if you have a um, system that's considered to be chaotic. Uh -huh. do you, chaotic, do you, did you say? Ca chaos, yeah. Yeah, okay. So do you think this is um, an NP hard problem that you can actually calculate? Cha isn't chaos somehow on the boundary between physics and mathematics? I think that, isn't it? I, I think if I tried to get my computer to emulate some chaotic system, then isn't there, isn't there problems with eventually things getting so close to each other? I don't... For I, example, I, the weather. Well, I... Yeah. I'm not the person... I don't know anything about chaos theory. I think there... I believe that there are problems in chaos theory that are NP-complete. So you do see the phenomenon. You do see the phenomenon there, but I can't... I read on the internet that we'll be able to, we'll be able to predict the weather better, but I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. Any, I don't know anything about this stuff at all. Actually, I don't quite know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jane or John, over, over, over there. Yeah. Uh, coming. Microphone's coming. That's this game here. So <laughs> let's do that later. <laughs> this game here is MP hard. P pushing all these little squares on. I've been playing this game a lot recently. <laughs> And uh, this is a great... If I work out how to do these levels really, really quickly, then I prove P equals MP. And, and, you know, that will... What does really, really quickly mean? Uh, I mean, I need to... Well, quicker than I'm doing now. <laughs> 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 quickly means... Quickly means... Can, I, can I, I feed that level into a computer? And can the computer tell me how to solve that level? See, I can, I can figure out how to solve this. I can press the hint thing, and the computer will tell me how to do it. But the computer knows... You know, the computer's been told a solution, right. you see. Humans design these levels, and computers are quite bad at solving them. Yeah. Question over there. Right. Hey. hey. Um, obviously, there's things that we sort of know are true empirically, but we can't prove. Thinking about this the other way around, how does proving that something is possible actually make those applications that you put on the board that are quite specific more probable in yeah. themselves to be solved? So, so I suppose you, that's a... Yeah, so I've told a lie in some sense. Because you've seen, you've seen in this talk very abstract w ways of proving things, right? And there are certainly very, I, there are very abstract ways of proving things in mathematics where you prove that something can be done but don't actually exhibit any way of doing it. So in some sense, I've told you lies because, because in theory it's possible that mathematicians will be able to prove abstractly that P equals MP in such a weird way that it will give us no way of will give us actually no way of doing it. So, yeah, so flaw in the argument. However, it's very difficult to... But in this, using our... If, it, if P equals MP was proved now, it's probably not going to be proved by that. It's probably, that's pro if, P, if, if P equals MP was proved now, it's probably because someone's going to take one of these MP hard problems and, and solve that, and then everything else. And, and once that happens, that will follow. But you're absolutely right. There's a theoretical possibility, and how frustrating would that be? that we end up proving abstractly that P... Like, there's one, one other possibility, is we prove that it's impossible to prove whether P equals MP or not. That could also happen. <laughs> so there are these sort of boundary... There are boundary issues. Uh, it's impossible to prove whether P equals MP or not in mathematics. And so then we have to maybe start thinking about what mathematics is and changing our definitions. I mean, yeah, weirder things can happen, but yeah, you're absolutely right. But I, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's likely. But I think it's likely that P isn't MP. So. Okay, one last question. Very smart question. Please here. Hello. Hi. Go break from the microphone, um, John. Your, your talk reminds me a lot of witness. Break the microphone coming. I can't imagine what you're about to say. <laughs> reminded your, talk, me of your talk reminded me a lot of uh, uh, Bitcoin and public oh, yeah, key yeah, cryptography yeah. around Bitcoin, and it struck me that yeah, yeah. this is decrypting much of a Bitcoin. Yes, absolutely, that's yes, MP isn't, isn't Bitcoin? an NP problem, because yeah, yeah. if you have the public and the private key, yeah, you can yeah. solve it. Yeah, absolutely. But if you don't have it, it's impossible to yeah. solve, and Bit it relies on it. Yeah, yeah. If P equals MP, then Bitcoin's broken, but I, most people don't know what Bitcoins are yet. Okay. So, like, in 10 years' time, I'll give this talk again. Like, that might be... Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Bitcoin is an example of an NP problem. I've understood Bitcoin that. is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Bitcoin, is an, Bit, Bitcoin is an NP problem. So, yeah. Stealing other people's Bitcoins is, is uh, not known to be easy. <laughs> 
you have any Bitcoins? Yeah, yeah Andy. How many have you got? Oh, that's a rude question. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got less than one. <laughs> but you, you need the Bitcoins to buy the drugs on the internet. You know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I think on that point, I will <laughs> draw things to conclusion. I just wanted to thank you for a super discourse. Thank you. Thank you.